identify themselves so you can be placed in our midst. Bob Rouser, repository. Uh, Mike Brown, Channel 18. Glenn Devon, Independent. Sam Berkman, WHBC. Todd Porter from the repository. Tim Rogers from the plant dealer. Ray Jasky from ESPN 990. Ed Staley from the Independent. Tony Gillian from BeatMcKinley.com. <laughs> Uh, I want to start off um, by thanking my wife and my family. Uh, you know, it was talked about a little earlier. I got a great support system, and that's something I'll talk with the, with the players. You know, having a support system is huge. And my wife and my family, you know, they're at every game. My mom comes up from Columbus. You'll see her. You'll hear her. She's my biggest critic. So uh, uh, my support system is great, and that allows me to uh, do the things that I do and put the time in that I get to put in. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the committee uh, and the process because I was really, uh, you know, at first, you're worried about the program you're at and being dragged around. And, and that's the honest truth in the, in the coaching circle. And from the moment Chris contacted me and told me the process, I was 100% on board and 100% wanted to be a Tiger. So, uh, you know, it was a detailed interview, which I thought was great because I'm the type of person, if you talk to me, what you see is what you get. I'm not going to be a false guy, so I was great. I went in there, and I, I laid out line Jason Hall and got to hear the masculine tiger point of view and really did my research as well and decided to get involved. Uh, I thought the people on the committee knew what they were talking about, and I think that's crucial. Uh, when you're talking with someone about building a program from the bottom up, uh, them understanding and believing in it, and wanting to get on board and have your back is huge from a coach's standpoint. And I felt that everybody in that room, I bonded with the first time I started talking with them. Their talk, side talks were going on. It was just a great, one of the best processes, the best process I've been a part of as far as sitting down, a relaxed atmosphere, and talking about building programs. So I was really excited about that. And I really want to commend the committee for the way they set that up and, and, and Chris, uh, Mr. Duretto. Um, I, I want to thank the administration. Uh, obviously, since um, you know, the last week or so, I've been able to talk with Mike and Tim, and uh, I'll tell you what, I think it's going to be a great relationship. I get, uh, me and Tim hit it off right away. We've been talking daily, and, and I'm ready to jump in and get, get started. You'll see me a lot. I guarantee that. Um, as far as about masculine football, uh, I think something that everybody needs to understand is the first thing I will target is education. <laughs> I'm not making any mistakes about it. Our kids are going to go to college. And if they play football, that's great. <clears throat> and that's the standpoint we're going to take. So if our kids want to slack off in school, well, then they're not going to play on Friday nights. That's the bottom line. Uh, education has to come first. I believe in that. And I believe that your football program's here. Your education has to be here, too. It's got to be a balance. We don't want this. So that's something that the staff <coughs> And, and myself and, and the administration, I know we talked about it. It's something that we're going to attack hard, and I believe in, in the administration, and I'm excited about getting started. Um, you know, I'm a big goal setter. So as, as if there's parents in here, your kids are going to be coming home with goal sheets, and the first one's going to be a academic. And then later on, we'll start working on their team and individual football goals. So as you see those coming on, home, oh, I ask them to hang them on the fridge or in their bedroom. They need to see them daily. So the first one you will see is their education goals. And we're going to set those marks. Um, you know, I'm very excited, and obviously any coach would be the dream project. And as soon as you start talking about that, you know, that's exciting when you start mixing in the facilities with the uh, ex expectation of academics with it. And that goes back to what I just said. I'm excited about the project and all the things that are going on with the dream project. And it, again, it's another situation that I think our kids and our community has just got a great opportunity with the projects that are going on. Uh, in regards to the football <coughs> program, now we're going to start talking some football. Uh, the, 
my system or my philosophy is going to be from the bottom to the top. Our youth program, our middle school, and our high school will be on the same system. Uh, so we're going to be training our, our youth coaches. We're going to make sure we have quality people in our youth program that are coaches. And our staff, our high school staff will train. Our high school <coughs> staff will be at the youth camps. So uh, you know, the expectations are just as high for the youth program as it is for the varsity program, the JV program, the freshman program. So the expectation from the bottom to the top is very high. Um, you know, a lot of people will have talked about my relationship piece, and I believe in the relationships. I believe that there's two ways to coach. You coach by fear, you coach by relationships. Well, I'm a relationship guy. I don't want kids to fear me. All right, there's a respect factor. I don't want anybody to fear me. I like, I like to hang out with people. I like people to talk with me, so I don't want fear involved in it. So uh, when I say that is uh, relationships with players, <coughs> coaches, boosters, administrators, all those things. But with those relationships and getting involved in the program, there's expectations and guidelines for everybody. Uh, too much involvement is not going to be tolerated because there has to be an understanding. Uh, I, I don't like a lot of uh, distractions, I would say. So our kids are going to be focused at the task at hand, getting education and playing good, sound, <coughs> fundamental football. And, and I guess some people I know it's going to come out, what am I going to address the team with? The number one thing, we're going to start off, we're going to play as a team. That's the number one goal. We're going to play as a team. Our coaches, from the bottom <coughs> to the top, it's going to be team, team, team. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is accountability All right, for everybody in their actions. I believe that when you make, when you're out in the public, and I, can see, I like looking up these guys because they're really paying attention. When you're out in the public, everything you do comes back on our program. And it comes back on our community and the people that are building this great tradition or adding on to the tradition. So those are the expectations we're going to have for all of our kids. And I think those are things that everybody wants and should demand in, our, in the community of Massa. Um, and, and the last thing, and again, this is something I'm going to talk with the, uh, the men a little bit more tomorrow morning. Is I think there's one way to approach football. And uh, that approach is you need football more than football needs you. And, and there's a little way to look at that. No matter what happens, the football team's going to play. Right? We're going to play on Fridays and Saturdays. doesn't matter who's on it. But if you want to be a part of this team, coaches and players, you approach it like that, like it's very important, education, football, we're going to be successful. So I'm going to end it with that. And, uh, I'd like to thank everybody, myself and my family. We're ready to get going. My little ones, my four-year-old is ready to pet that tiger. So we got to get going.